Hello, my lovely fellow artists. If you have a studio, you well know that this can be a messy experience. But while I sit here and have my cup of coffee this weekend, I thought I would do the Paint With Me series about straightening up my watercolors and just having a chat. Oh, that coffee is so good. So I did a lot of painting in this last weekend. As you can see, I have so many different sets out and I wanted to just give you guys a little quick view of how I store my paint on hand because I actually need to have it on hand. And yes, I do have a lot of watercolor, but I have been reorganizing and I have been swatching like crazy. And my goal is to right there, take some of my art down and actually just put a full on color sampling of every color that I have. As you can tell, I started to do it there. And then I was like, you know, wouldn't it be nice to just have it going across the entire back of my studio? And that way, as I get all this great new paint in, I can see it and know what's there. Because often I find that this watercolor can be quite a task in keeping it organized and keeping my favorites on hand. And as new colors come in for me to review or take a look at, then it kind of gets to be like that. Just kind of crazy stuff, right? So this is a good story for you. So I found this palette and it wasn't a professional watercolor company. They actually are a sketch company called Faber-Castell. I actually have done a full review on this paint set. And in reviewing the paint set, I realized that this was the palette that I was missing, but not necessarily the watercolor that I was missing. Now for a beginner, yeah, the watercolor's fine. They did a good job on it. And actually I did swatch it out and I played with it and it performed really well. I compared it to Schmincke, compared it to Sennelier. In fact, if you look at my messy desk here, this is what I was doing just the other day when I left to go do something else. And you can see that the watercolor actually held up pretty well. It didn't paint as well as the professional brands, but at around $50 for all these colors, I mean, you can't go wrong if you want something you can take with you. But the magic that I found is in the palette because this palette I thought was terribly cute. So of course I ripped out the watercolor <laughs> sleeve and I am in the process of converting it to a nifty palette that has a, um, a mixing well for me. And you know, I have a ton of them, right? I mean, of course, if you take a little view at the bottom of my studio, which I will be cleaning up today, I literally have all of these, all of those. And if you look over there, which I'm not going to show you, there's even more palettes on top of these and these. Yeah. I'm palette obsessed, but it's because I have so many watercolor and I've been doing it for so long. So the palette that came in this set is just one of these flexible little things, but to tell you the truth, it's pretty good quality. And if I didn't have pans, I would just pull these out and I would put my own professional quality watercolor in them and that would be fine. But I already have everything in pans and I really don't want to have to store all this stuff again. So I found that the bottoms, they fit these, but not really that well, right? There's too much space in between them, which isn't a terrible thing. It's kind of attractive if I can find something to stick them down, maybe put some like little metal pieces on the bottom. But I found this sticky putty that is working well and it's actually keeping them pretty well level. So I'm working on it. It's a process and I will share that more with you later on this Paint With Me series pretty interesting, right? So now I have to figure out something to do with this. But to tell you the truth, this is kind of fun. I might just give it to one of my friends who is painting locally here and doesn't have a lot of watercolor because they were pretty good watercolors. Were they professional grade? I don't know. I don't think so. They said that they're light fast, but they don't give you any pigment information, which makes me think maybe they're dye based. I can say they were a lot of fun to swatch out. And overall, when they started to play together, they were really having a good time. You can see it's pretty vivid, but is it as vivid as like the, um, like the Schmiga set? No, not really. When they dry, you can see the dry shift. These ones are Schmincke, which is my 
end all love in life and they dry beautifully and they are gorgeous colors, right? These dry a little bit light. They don't start that way, they start a little heavier, but then as the water kind of goes in, they dry light. But at the same time, they're pretty vivid and pretty nice. And even when I did complementing colors next to each other, they didn't turn to mud. So would I recommend them for a beginner? Yeah, sure. If you don't have any watercolor and you wanna get started, then yeah, long term, honestly, this is gonna be a great palette. It's actually a lot of fun to use and it's light and I don't seem to want to drop it. And that's my story, cause I drop everything. Anyway, continuing to clean. So we're gonna put that there for now. And I have to get all of these, which are just extra pans back into here. And then we're gonna work on picking some ideas for this wall because I really want to create a swatch card that has, or multiple swatch cards, that have my colors, not necessarily by color, but probably by brand. Because I find that as different sales come up and I get different opportunities, or I find out and see somebody else watching different brands, what happens is I want to purchase, but I don't know if I necessarily have a color that's close to it or not by a certain brand. This isn't fitting. Oh, that's why. So I think that rather than swatch them out by like all the yellows and all the greens, I think it'd be smarter to do it by brand. And that way, as I add to my collection, I can very, very easily change that sheet and not be committed to, oh, I already filled all of the yellow spots. So now I have no more spaces for yellow. You know what I'm saying? Let me give you an example. So I used to have them in here and I have been using this a lot, but the problem with it is that it runs out of space, right? And I hate this paper. This paper is a nightmare for watercolor. I don't even know how people can paint with Strathmore. It actually drives me crazy. Um, it does so many weird streaky things. Like, look at that, right? It's just nuts. It's not supposed to do that, but in any case, I did use it. I used it all up. I'm not even bothering with these pages that I haven't filled yet because I really just don't like all the blotchiness and it doesn't need to be there unless I purposely want it to be there. I did do this one though, and I really like this design. I think this is really cool to look at and it kind of shows the information really easily and I can go like this gradient way. You know, what do you think? I think it's a nice design. And I could totally picture that being up there with all of the colors. So that is option number one as far as design for these color sheets that are going to go brand by brand across this back wall. So this is gonna disappear. These are Roman Schmal. <sighs> Can we just stop for a second and just say how great these are? Yep, they're great. You know, I was having a conversation with somebody and I don't like to mention names, but listen, I will start if you guys want me to. In any case, we were talking about Schmincke and how wonderful and why I consider it to be at the top of my brand list. Well, one, it's at the top of my list because no matter what I compare it to, it's consistent. It's always beautiful and it always does what I want. Even on bad paper, it does a good job. But at the same time, some people think it's really expensive. And I was saying that, you know, I don't find it to be that much more expensive like, than Sennelier, which is my second favorite brand, and compared to Roman Schmal, which is my third favorite brand. Now, Roman Schmal has a little different thing going on than Sennelier. Sennelier does beautiful glazes, right? And you can layer, layer, layer them. You can also layer the um, Schmincke stuff. The Schmincke does great layering, and it will really do the job and you'll just have a great time painting with it. So very consistent is Sennelier and Schmincke. But at the same time, there are some paints in Roman Schmal that just inspire me. Not only are they like really moody and really cool and just they have neat effects, but they're not really expensive to buy. But then if you think about it, if you get a 15 ml tube and that 15 ml tube fills multiple pans and each one of these pans is like five to seven dollars 
then it works out to be the same price. So you can choose Roman Small, but you can also buy by the tube Schmincke or Sennelier. And honestly, if you get them on sale, that's even less. So back to my story. Okay, so the other way that I've been swatching watercolor is on those great big sheets, which I am looking for right now. So let me see. As I clean, I'm sure I will find them. Oh, here they are. Okay, so some time ago, I agreed to review some Paul Rubin paper. So I have all this paper and it is really great for swatching. It's 100% cotton. It does have a learning curve to it. It doesn't seem to have the kind of sizing that the Fabriano or the Arche paper does. It's kind of like there's like this really soft texture, but if you pre-wet it and then add the color, it doesn't, it blends a lot easier. It's just when you first apply the watercolor, what happens is you can get a line and then when you go to do the second one. So it doesn't do like wet on dry as well as wet on wet, but wet on wet, it's fine. And you get these beautiful, like really, really gorgeous, um, dances with the color, right? So first I designed this and then I thought, well, that doesn't really look as uniform as it needs to be. I think it's just kind of, eh, right? I kind of like that still better. So we're going to push this one away and this one, that one matched a palette. And then I started doing these for this uh, series of dot cards so that you guys could see all of the different colors, right? And they end up looking like that. And I actually think it looks really, really clean. I think it looks good. This is very easily done too, because I just tape it. So I don't actually have to draw on the lines. I just use tape and then I can just write the pigment information right underneath. So my question really to you, and by the way, there are videos on all of these colors and how I did these swatches, just in case you want to see them. Okay. So do you like this? version or this version? And that's my big question for today before I start cleaning everything up and getting all organized so that I can paint some swatches. Which version do you like better? Now, of course, this would be this size and then they would be up there right across the back of my studio. I kind of do love something about this, but I love the information about this. But the thing is, it's kind of the same. I guess if I wrote the information here on the lines without the black lines, do you think it would look as sharp and good? Or do you think it would look more messy? I'm kind of thinking that, I mean, I can read them just like they are, but this looks very, very clear to me and it kind of stands out more. So I definitely, I'm perplexed. I'm trying to decide if I should outline in black and put the the names on the bottom here, or if I should keep them not outlined and just write the names right on the the, the swatch. All right, I need to know. So that's something that you guys can let me know in the comments. All right, so let's see. I'm still cleaning. It's kind of fun to clean with one hand, actually. So these ones are Daniel Smith dot cards. I actually got a dot card from them, and I thought, wouldn't it be fun to do large swatches instead of the small swatches? So I know that this one is already out. I'm getting ready to release the next one for you guys. So that will be the blues, which oh, they are gorgeous. Now this isn't everything in the dot card. What I did is pick out the ones that I liked the best and those are the ones I'm going to swatch for you because I don't know, when something doesn't inspire me, I just don't really wanna waste time with it. But that's just me. I figure there are tons. Ooh, I need to clean that up, don't I? There are tons and tons and tons of swatch videos out there where everybody's swatching everything. Now this is a swatch card that was my original granulating palette granulating palette is pretty cool actually that one's coming along very very well and that one is here however I can say just as an FYI this thing is not for travel in fact I still have a lot to do with it because I almost drop it almost every single time I go to pick it up and because I've got these a gallows in here still 
they don't really fit so the lid doesn't shut so I really have to get these guys out of there even though I love these colors so today these are all sadly going to leave my granulating palette and go back into their own palette that holds them very nicely that a gallo sent me and I'll just have to remember that they're granulating because they just don't fit they don't fit in here but everything else does and is doing well as you can tell this is just a painting palette but it's huge so what I did is I'm using this sticky putty and I'm fitting in all of my um, my full pans in here because I already put everything in pans so if I were to pour it in these they're great for extra ones coming in now, but it would mean that I'd have all of these pans to still store. So I tried to like do both. So far, I really love this palette. This one has a really nice arrangement. It's a triple decker. And like I said, as soon as I can get the, um, as soon as I can get it all fitting in here and the lid shutting, I'm good to go. But I think, I think it's probably these here because they're they're like I put them in the wells so I think what needs to happen is these need to go on this underneath sheet so that they fit there and then these will all be just poured paint along this the outsides and then this will shut fine but again, this is so heavy and you can't really bring it anywhere, even shut. And I almost drop it all the time and I'm not like finished securing everything in and picking out the arrangement. So this is kind of like the color key up to now, but it's gonna change. Okay, so that's the granulating palette. Let's put that together and it needs some work. Maybe I'll take the egg gallo stuff out today, but I kind of want to swatch and do some work there. So that's the space for this so this little guy can't stay there it's got to be that voila and then I have this side here I don't think but you know once this shuts this will fit we'll just leave that there for now oh real world problems where do I put all the watercolor okay so it's gonna stay there for now the swatch cards Oh, yeah, here's something I wanted to show you. So I actually, like I don't have other things to do. This is the Mission Gold palette. Um, if anybody has a Mission Gold palette and you don't know how to swatch it out and you want, I don't know, like a photocopy of this before I painted it, I can take a picture of this and give it to you. I'll show you why. Mission Gold, and I have a video on this, so don't get scared, but this is my messy palette. I actually keep this piece of watercolor paper on it because it's still not dry. And as you can see, whoop, that's my messy palette right there. But it's got these really cool arrangements, but they're very, very hard to draw on a swatch card and to represent really, really easily so that you can just look at it. So what I did, as I did this one and it fits pretty well and I'll tell you what this is so the colors go around here just ignore that I have some in the center because I, I do it that way so the colors go around here and so this would be the swatching of those colors right so we have one two three four five one two three four five and then you have the corner too and so I split it because no matter what I could come up with on this painting or on this drawing I messed it up all the time and the reason why is because it's really quite complex <laughs> you know what I mean like this just didn't really look right and didn't represent well on the sheet so I split it there and then I have the four in the center so then it would be one two three four which to me makes more visual sense so that when I get here, I'm not gonna grab the wrong color. Because what happens is you see this and visually, you wanna go here and you do, and it's perfect. That exactly matches. And then you know to go there because that one's on the curve. But then you're just visually dealing with four in the center, which makes it really easy by eye to go to right to the right color. And you know, some of the colors look a little similar, even though they're not, 
So that's why this arrangement I felt worked better than my first arrangement. Now what these squares are in the center, that's the flexibility if I wanted to mix any of these colors and represent it on my color chart. I thought that would be really fun to have because a lot of times, you know, you mix the yellow with the blues and they're gonna come up with really, really cool greens. You mix the yellows with the pinks and the reds and they're gonna be beautiful oranges, you know, and so on. So I thought if there was any really nice mixes that I could come up with, I could just fill it in the square and it would go like, for instance, if I mix the, the yellow with uh, one of these colors, then it would go here because, or here, because this is the square for the yellow. If I use the white to do any pastel work, then it would fill in here you know, and if I mix the top two, then I could fill in here. So basically I would use this side here for these and this side here for these, right? It wouldn't be like, I'm gonna exactly mix these two and this is what I get. So I'm not doing it that way because it's not necessary and it's not big enough to represent them. This is just like, if I mix anything with this, it's gonna go here and then I can just write what I mixed it with on that. So if you want a um, download of this, let me know and I can send it to you. I thought it was a pretty cool arrangement and it took me quite some time and several drafts. <laughs> I can tell you that. All right, let's see. What else can I show you as I'm cleaning things? So there's my Mission Gold palette. Mission Gold can go right there because I love my Mission Gold and that's going to be swatching soon. So I'll make sure I take a picture of it just before. Um, this one right here is a card for one of my favorite palettes you guys ask me about constantly. And that one is down here. So hang on. I'm getting it. I actually have several of these that I love. Okay. So this one is, again, kind of a big palette. It's by Paul Rubens. They come in pink and they come in blue. And if you follow me, see, I had it messed up before. It has a, swat, a little uh, mixing palette there. And then it's got these really, really big wells. So I designed this to fit here. So now... That doesn't go that way. It goes the other way. Here we go. Okay. What do you think? So now I have an actual representation of what's down here. So if I want to use this for custom colors or just put my watercolor uh, brushes in it, then it can remain empty. Honestly, just FYI, and I have done this, you can put pans in here. So... You can do them either way. You can store your little half pans and just stick them in there. Um, it also does fit the full pans. So they fit in there pretty well too. And if you did wanna like not put watercolor in here, you could put two full pans in these little areas here um, that don't have watercolor in them or even like I'm just showing you so you know what options. And that's what I really love about this palette is that I love putting the colors right in. This is also a great palette for mixing. And I mean mixing as in, have you ever seen those palettes where there's two colors in one well and you're like, what does that do? Well, if you pour the color, let it dry, and then pour the second color, then you can use the colors alone, but then mix them in the center. And if you don't use too much water in those mixes, you really can have a very cool, fun palette to play with with this arrangement because these are so big. You could also do it with the Kiritake size things. They won't fit in this palette, but if you have extra Kiritake uh, pans, which if you need a resource for them, I do know somebody who makes them. So if you do need them empty, we can get them. Uh, so maybe you have an empty box or something and you want to make your own palette, then you could do it with these. But if you can buy this, this is like $20 or something. This is such a cool palette and it's waterproof and I really love it. I actually have both. So I have two of them. They did sell out, but I think I saw that they had restocked them. So just 
request a link and I will give it to you. By the way, if you are purchasing anything with my affiliate links, please let me know because they do a raffle drawing every single month for people who use my affiliate links and I give away some free paint or brush, whatever you wanna choose from my Amazon shopping store. Okay, so what do you think of that design? Did I, did I get it? I think I got it on the money. I think it's great. So again, if you have this palette, I can take a picture of this before I um, go ahead and paint it and you can have the layout so that you can just, I don't know, you can use it as a guide because it took me a while to space them out. I actually learned a really cool trick though to do it. So once I got the trick, it was a lot easier. You know, I'm holding my phone. I hope I am not, will that fit? It should fit. I hope I'm not distracting you by moving the thing around too much. Oh, it doesn't fit anymore. Oh, that's a bummer. Okay. Well, I have to paint this one, so I do want it out. So we're just going to put it probably under there. Let's put these away. I'll store my clips over here. Mm -hmm. This is extra metal. This was, what was this? This was, I got this in and some new watercolors came in and I was playing with them. Why I did the little half pans in here, I don't know. I, oh, these are all new, that's right. These are all new colors that I'm reviewing. So right now I'm kind of doing like a different color, painting with a different color every day and I try to get as much video on it as I can. So those are in here. There are some gorgeous colors in here. I've already done a few of them. Some of them are in my granulating watercolor class, but yeah, these just came in and are ones that I'm not hugely acquainted with and I'm just getting to know. So I just keep them in their own little half pan set, which makes sense to me. I mean, if I put them in with the other guys, I'm ultimately going to lose them. You know what I mean? So this is going to go on top of this. And these can be stored right there. Perfect. Okay, what is this? This is a just... So I buy... Oh yeah, this is this week's challenge. This was really fun to paint. So I buy big sheets of watercolor paper. And I wanted to mention it to you because I make these accordion sketchbooks out of them. Right now, I was able to buy here in Canada, Artistico 100% cotton watercolor paper, 30 inch sheets for $4 per sheet. And it is lovely, lovely paper. I actually adore it. So that means this sketchbook, which is quite large, has 30 pages that I can paint in it, right? 30 pages and look at how Brilliant, the colors on that schminka, by the way. Yeah, gorgeous, right? And actually, this is White Knight. Isn't that pretty? So, and this is Roman Schmal. Gorgeous. See, they're so moody. Um, yeah, so like, this paper is amazing. So I would highly recommend that you take my granulating sketchbook class and make a sketchbook and learn how to use this paper and work with the paint because it's so inexpensive and you're working on 100% cotton paper all the time. And it just is so much nicer to work with. You know what I mean? So hang on, I'm gonna hang this up so that I can use both hands for a sec. Here we go. Yeah, so that's what I've been doing and I love it. I've also made my own sketchbooks at times and there is a video here on the YouTube channel for that showing you how to make these. So this is actually done with just one of those sheets of paper. So like, you know, if you get a traditional Arsh paper or um, Hanamula, they have like 12 sheets in them. It's 100% cotton, 12 sheets. They're usually like kind of expensive, right? But what this is, is this is the backboard to that pad and the front cover of that pad. And I made it into a cover for a sketchbook. 
And so I was able to make a 30 page, oh, it's like 12, 24, 36, 42, 42 page sketchbook out of 112 sheet of nine by 12 inch paper. And so I literally can paint anything I want to on 100% cotton, gorgeous paper. So it's just a matter of getting a 12 sheet on sale and converting it to these lovely sketchbooks, which I adore. And I actually find them really, really relaxing to make, you know? I think they're really relaxing to me. So I just do small sketches in them and test out watercolors that I like and get to know my colors. I usually always do it like a swatch page and then I will um, take the colors through and just kind of like evolve out some ideas uh, in the paintings and just have fun with them. You know, like this is actually the A Gallo uh, set that they sent me. They sent me a custom designed set of a gallo paints with lots of granulation and i started to swatch them out in just one painting so that i could just see them all play together so i have to go back and finish that actually probably will do that once i replace i have to put them back in their little pan set because they just belong in that pan set so this is neat right so just ideas for upcoming videos ideas for classes that i might um, teach ideas just for ways to swatch colors without being bored or just relaxing meditations. These were actually meditations. So what I mean by meditations is I sit down with a pen and I just kind of draw and draw really interesting, unique pages and then paint them. And it's the most relaxing thing because this is kind of tedious if you're trying to do it for painting, but it's very not tedious if you're doing it for just a relaxing morning with your coffee or a way to um, fall asleep at night. I think some people call it Zentangle. Um, Zentangle is kind of like the art of this. This is the beam paints that were sent to me. They're made in Canada. They're beautiful. Gosh, she's got beautiful paints. I need to go back and talk to her because she has gorgeous paints. She really does. She makes them here. And uh, what a lovely brand and what a lovely lady she is. Actually, she sent me paints and I went back and bought paint from her because she was so nice. And I actually just wanted to support her business because I loved what she was doing and I'm, I'm thinking about these paints right now and I'm thinking how gorgeous they are. They're like, these are up in the quality of a Gallo paints, you know, but just very unknown brand and unappreciated, but I'm appreciating her right now. It's beam paints is who she is and she's amazing. So there's another thing. This is kind of cool. All right. So I need to know also from you guys, what you think of these paint with me um, series. Do you like this little clean up the studio kind of thing where I just talk about stuff in the studio and show you different things? Is this a video you would like to see again? Would you like to join me as I clean my studio on the weekends and like do some swatching and stuff like that? Is that something that you're interested in? Because I would like to know as I prepare for the busy week ahead. So these were some of the swatches that I did in testing out those um, Faber-Castell colors. You know, overall, I can still say if you have no watercolor at all and you just wanna get a quick set or and maybe just give it away or use the palette later, that's a good one for that. Would I paint with them again? I wouldn't paint with them just because I have so much watercolor, but if this was the only watercolor I had, I would paint with them and they're fun. Would I sell the paintings? No, I would not because I can't guarantee the light fastness of them. And they do have quite the dry shift. So I noticed I had to lay them in heavier than normal and they weren't as smooth. Like if you look here, you can see how Schmincke just smooths out. It's just so lovely, right? That Schmincke there, here, here, um, here. They're just, they paint just wow. And then you can do uh, blooms with them very easily. You cannot really bloom these other colors as well as you can bloom these, right? This is core, uh, Schmincke, Schmincke, Roman Schmal. Um, these are 
the fabric castell ones are here yeah so there were some things but as far as just a basic watercolor set that layers yeah you could get some good good stuff out of this if you were just like just kind of doing pretty watercolors that didn't require any effects right so if you're looking for effects you want to go with like some of Schmincke. uh core has some really cool effects they're just really really fluid roman schmal has moody effects and um Sinele layers well they're very smooth uh the granulating super granulating paints by Schmincke, they have the best effects overall like these granulating paints are to die for. I mean, I've never really painted with anything as good as these super granulating paints. So if you were on the fence as far as whether you should buy and invest in Schmincke, the tubes are 15 mLs. So that means you get like seven and a half half pans out of this or five full pans out of one tube of paint. So like that's $5 per pan right? For the best top of the line professional watercolor. Um, and they're, they're lovely. I mean, they're really, really lovely to paint with. Um, there's another brand that has some granulating paint that I used in my granulating sketchbook class. And that is right here, which I cannot pull them out but I do have a sheet on it. And this is why I should have the sheet. Here you go. Can't pull them out because they're underneath. This is the White Knight granulating set. So the colors are much different in Schmincke compared to White Knight, but there are some big clear stars in the White Knight sets. They come in sets of three. I don't know that I arranged them in sets of three. I might have. Yeah, I kind of did. One of the sets that I love is this mist set with gray rose mist, hematite mist, and lilac mist. That is just amazing to paint with. Loved it. The other one that is my big star is this aquamarine mist. I love that one. Um, I also really loved the dark, the shadow dark blue, dark blue shadows, and blue mist. Big stars. This green shadows, huge star, because it's really hard to find a green that goes to like black and green. So within one painting, you can actually do so many things. Let me get that sketchbook out. Did I put it away? Where did I put it? See, this is why I'm cleaning, because, yeah, here it is. Okay, so let's see. So there's the dark blue shadows, right? That's one paint. This is the blue mist. So this one, one paint, right? The hematite mist that's in that set. One paint color. Look at all of the, the tones. They're just beautiful. There's the gray blue mist. It's got like a pink and a gray in it. And here's the blue shadows. Isn't that stunning? So you can get this like really, really dark um, mass tone down to these really beautiful little like kind of cobalt they're kind of like beautiful blues and grays um, cobalt mist of course is stunning this was the back was the aquamarine and I just went crazy over it look at all the different tones in it it's so pretty and then I use the aquamarine I use the lilac mist and the dark blue shadows for the for the darks in here so I used three this is all in the granulating sketchbook class. I actually teach you how to do this entire thing. Um, cobalt mist was really pretty. I thought it was beautiful and I like cobalt a lot and that actually comes with the aquamarine mist. So that's like a big, uh, a big bold plus. Violet mist was also lovely. That's clearly a star. It's just that some of them just really just bowled me over. Violet shadows I thought was beautiful. So you have hematite mist in one set and violet shadows in another set. And then the lilac mist, I believe comes with the hematite mist. So you get the hematite, the lilac mist, and the, the, the gray rose mist in one kit. I have them. I'll show you how they come. This one, if you saw this on the group page, is the aquamarine mist. Isn't that great? 
right? And then there's the sky blue shadows. That's really pretty. But like there are clearly stars in this series, correct? Don't you see that? For sure. So I did buy, um, whenever I find clear stars, I buy an extra set. So I actually invested in two sets. I like them so much. I invested in two full sets of these. So I'm keeping them wrapped so that you can see what they look like. Still, Schmink is my number one. I'm actually going to do a bunch of um, watercolor paintings with these so you can see just how gorgeous these are. But if you have access to White Nights and you like White Nights, these are such a great deal as well. So now when we're talking about price, so in some stores they sell the Schmincke Hordum 15 ml tubes for 25 to 30 dollars. So this tube will make like five pans, right? So one tube will make one, two, three, four, five. So it will make all of those right there. That's a lot for one tube of paint, right? I think it'll even make a little bit more because I think it's like five and a half. Correct me for whoever uh, knows the, the math on it. That is quite a lot to get. So if it were $25, then you're basically paying $5 per pan, right? That's a really good deal. These you get three tubes for $20. So being that these are very large tubes as well, they're 10 ml tubes. So this is a 15 ml tube. 10 ml tubes are going to make less pans, yes. But at the same time, you get three for $20. And that's why I bought two sets because I really, really love all of the colors and they're different colors than I, than I bought in my Schmincke set, or I should say multiple sets. Um, so now between all of them, I literally have a gorgeous set of granulating colors and that's what is in this really big granulating palette. It's these, all the schminkas and then various colors from different brands that granulate and I you know just let's call it a day because they're just I have so many beautiful granulating colors I just love them um, so I'm thinking of doing a swatch sheet just dedicated just to the granulation which technically is like this but we're gonna do it in that format that's gonna hang on the wall so anytime I want to just pick out the granulating ones I can just look at the sheet and I'll just see what's granulating, you know? Does that make sense? Like if anybody has a question about watercolor, I can just look at my wall or take a picture right of my wall and show you guys what the colors look like and talk to you about them. I think ultimately that is my summer project. Okay, so we'll put those away. So here I am. So now my sketchbooks, let's put the clip. That's going to go here, and then I'll store my sketchbooks in this little basket. So I have this basket. This is a really pretty sketchbook. I actually painted this. This was a painting, and I wrapped the painting around board, you know, the back of one of the uh, watercolor things, and then I put the accordion sketchbook in it. So literally I'm painting out an accordion sketchbook inside of this cover and I have the cover painted. Now what I did on the outside to make it waterproof is I just took Mod Podge because that's all I had in the studio at the time and I just put a very light coating of it. It didn't smudge the watercolor and it made it like, like a really nice solid cover. Isn't that great? So here's all the sketchbooks that I'm currently working with. And they each do different things. So I have some for swatching, some for playing, some for the granulating class that I'm developing so that you guys can take those and those go in the basket. 
Well, I think I'm getting here. Okay, so I'm going to take a break and go get some lunch. I hope you guys will do the same. Enjoy your cup of coffee and thanks for joining me. If you want to see more paint with me videos in this series, um, you know, I'll be doing everything from painting, painting all the swatches to painting different things in my sketchbooks. Um, but basically it's just kind of like a little more relaxed blog, I guess, blog. Uh, let me know and I will do more because I'm always in the studio. So happy to turn on the camera so you can see what I'm doing and look at the brushes and, and the different paints and hear my thoughts on them. Have a great day, you guys, and happy painting.